I mean, certainly I'd be very, of course, if, if there was a, a small cat next to me that suddenly became a tiger, I'd be very worried too, you know. Mishimer, I mean, doesn't Kishore have a point that we need to be geopolitically sensitive to the rising power of China? It is our largest trading partner. It accounts for nearly 40% of our export wealth. We are in Australia probably heading into our worst recession since certainly the Great Depression in the 1930s. Aren't we vulnerable to China's economic coercion? I mean, what can we do to push back against these kind of Chinese threats? Should we become more diplomatic and move slowly but surely into the Chinese sphere of influence? Well, I have a different view of what's happening uh, in Asia and in the world more generally than Kishore. Kishore tends to see the situation in what I would call civilizational terms. He, he sounds a lot like Sam Huntington, right? He talks about Asia rising and the West declining. And it's as if Asia were this unified entity. And that's just not the case at all. The Japanese live in mortal fear of the Chinese, and both the Japanese and the Chinese, the last time I checked, are in Asia. The Indians are worried silly about the rise of China. So within Asia, you have all these cleavages, and you have a large number of countries in Asia that are economically tied to China in all sorts of ways, as you described Australia, but they also are strategically tied to the United States, and they're very fearful of China. I would say for those states, and this of course includes Australia, yes, you have economic interests that will push you to side with China, but you also have strategic interests that will push you to side with the United States. And the $64,000 question is, which way are you gonna go? And the answer is, you're going to go with the United States, you're going to go with the Japanese, and you're going to do everything you can to contain China, because it is big, and it is powerful, and it is threatening. Well, uh, in other words, uh, security trumps prosperity. Keisha, how would you respond to John Mearsheimer? Security trumps prosperity. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you know, uh, it, John will be very surprised to discover that I agree with him uh, quite a lot. And I certainly agree with you, John, that Asia is this large and diverse place. And I agree with you, John, that countries like Japan and India, uh, South Korea are all very worried about China's rights. It's a fact, if all your neighbors have begun to carefully, gradually adjust to this new world that is emerging, and you insist on not changing or adapting to your new geopolitical environment, you will be creating problems uh, for yourself. And you know, there's some iron laws of geopolitics. In fact, many of them are spelled out in John Mearsheimer's book, The Great Delusion. And I would say one of the iron laws of geopolitics uh, is never pull the tail of a tiger. I mean, certainly I'd be very, of course, if there was a, a small cat next to me that suddenly became a tiger, I'd be very worried too, you know? <laughs> and at a time when the tiger is already angry and lots of people are throwing stones at this tiger you decide at that point in time to pull the, the tail of the tiger so there, there, there's there's some geopolitical wisdom in handling great powers carefully this is by the way equally true uh, of the united states too if you're a neighbor of the united states you just got to be careful in how you manage the United States. And, and as I think I read somewhere recently, John Mearsheimer was saying in the book, how would the United States feel if suddenly the Russians came in and established bases in Mexico and in uh, Canada? And, and, and John wisely said that, of course, the United States would get very upset. So every country, and I agree with John here, that every country will worry about what's happening in its neighborhood. So, so Australia has got to be aware it's in the neighborhood and has got to develop a certain degree of geopolitical sensitivity uh, to this new environment. And so that, so it, 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 to put it very simply and very succinctly, Australia has got to reboot its entire strategic thinking. But at the same time, I, I, I would encourage Australia to watch how other Asians deal with China. For a simple, simple example, uh, which I think George Cannon would have endorsed, 
the first thing you do is to insult a <laughs> great power, right? Ja the Japanese are very concerned, but at the same time, you notice how the Japanese are trying to make sure that their relations with China remain on an even keel. Modi and Xi Jinping have spent more time with each other talking face to face than any two leaders have in recent times. So they're, they're everybody, yes, we have to deal with a new China. And Australia, unfortunately, has not accepted the fact that this is a different China that you have to deal with. And, every, since every, and, and these adjustments, by the way, in Asia are very subtle, you know, very, very subtle changes going on. And I also want to emphasize, I agree with John, that most of the countries in this region want the U.S. to stay off this region. They would like to see a strong U.S. presence, but they would like to see a very tactful, diplomatic U.S. presence that doesn't force countries to choose. So you, it is possible, actually, to work out arrangements whereby you, China can rise uh, peacefully and we can all live in a relatively secure and stable environment.